We're going to talk about the British Medical Association. It's facing a big revolt uh, from uh, more than 1,400 doctors. Nine of them are BMA mem 900 of them are BMA members. 70 professors, 23 former and current presidents of that union have written to the me that medical union protesting about its dismissal of a paediatrician, renowned, eminent paediatrician, Hilary Cass's uh, report, uh, recommending that sex hormones should no longer be pre prescribed to children who claim gender dysphoria, who claim they were built, uh, born in the wrong body. Uh, obviously, uh, this is a rather uh, worrying situation. Don't think it's any of the union's business, uh, but uh, these doctors are just saying, look, Dr. Oh, Hilary Cass's report was evidence-based. You're just dismissing it with no evidence whatsoever. And it just feels like the sort of dark days of the madness over what we did to children at Frankenstein's castle, the Tavistock Centre, uh, over many years, mutilating them, giving them uh, puberty blocker drugs that completely changed their lives when they were too young really to make the decision. Doctors seeing sort of four and eight year old kids to discuss whether or not they were in the wrong body. This madness. It just feels like this uh, BMA uh, reaction is a kind of uh, possible return to those dark days. Let's talk to from the uh, Sex Matters organisation uh, to Fiona McEnana. Hello Fiona. Hi, Kevin. Uh, well, you just heard what I said. Uh, I, I mean, it's encouraging that 1,400 doctors, 70 professors, 23 former, current, pr former or current presidents of the BMA and uh, indeed 900 BMA members have written to the BMA saying, you've got, you can't do this. You know, Dr Hillary, Hillary Cass's report was uh, exhaustive, it was uh, immaculate, she is a renowned paediatrician, she just said, we've got to stop giving drugs to kids, uh, you know, girls who climb trees or boys who wear pink, basically. Uh, it's sanity finally prevailed. The BMA is going against that. Uh, what do you make of that? I think it must be very troubling if you're a parent of one of these distressed children. When you hear the BMA come out and say, we're a bit dubious about this report, you know, what parent wouldn't want to have the best possible health care for their child, particularly these children who claim to be unhappy, feel that there's something wrong with them? And yet there's no good diagnostic to be able to say which children need what kind of treatment. In fact, what Dr. Cass found is that the vast, vast majority of them have other issues. Um, and also previous studies have shown that mostly children grow out of this. So the whole idea of the BMA demanding that the Cass review be called into question is, uh, I think, very irresponsible because those parents of those children really don't know they don't understand necessarily that that it's driven by some ideologues in that organization so it's terrific to see such a large number of, of respectable doctors come out and say no not in our name uh exactly uh, and it just feels like a sort of return to the the sort of dark days when the Tavistock Clinic in particular, you know, was doing bad things to children, uh, advising parents really bad things, uh, mutilating them sometimes, uh, giving them these drugs that change their lives. The CAS report appeared to, at long last, close the door on what you might call a couple of decades of utter insanity, NHS-sponsored insanity, and here's the, the BMA trying to go back to that. I mean, that is really, really disconcerting, isn't it? Yeah, and, you know, you've used some really strong terms in introducing this, but I think they're justified. I think in time, people will look at what happened to these children and say, what were they thinking? What child needs to have their puberty blocked and their natural development stopped just because they don't fit stereotypes? So it's, it's very concerning for the doctors' union who do have a good name. You know, many people will think the British Medical Association, that sounds reputable. It's disturbing for them to jump in on the basis of no evidence at all. And, uh, you know, we know that the CAS review has been very well received around the world. It's a very important piece of work. And it's, it's something that we all should be proud of, that, that at first under the Conservatives it was commissioned and now under Labour it's being implemented. This is very positive for those children. It will protect them.
Yeah, in fairness to West uh, Streeting, uh, he, he's, uh, uh, he's acting well so far as the health secretary in this area. Uh, he has uh, confirmed that uh, puberty blockers should not be prescribed anymore. Uh, but uh, the BMA uh, seems intent on waging a campaign to reverse all of that. I mean, it is encouraging that 1,400 doctors have written to them. Uh, but I suspect that uh, in their zeal, the BMA will continue with this. Uh, and somehow or other, somebody has to silence them. You know, you get a, an important piece of work, like the CAST report, a very important piece of work, uh, closing the door, as I said, on a very dark era. I make no apologies for those uh, strong terms that I used. Children were mutilated. I live quite near the Tav Tavistock Clinic, and uh, everyone in the area, we used to call it, uh, everybody called it Frankenstein's Castle, and it was a nickname that that place fully deserved. I cannot believe what was going on at that place. I'm sure you can't either. So the CAST report uh, looked to have ended that, and somehow or other, would you not agree, the BMA has to be uh, prevailed upon to stop this, to stop this. This is, this is insanity trying to rear its ugly head again, I think. Well, you'd hope that with this kind of rebuke from so many eminent doctors that there are enough wise heads at the top of the BMA to say, hold on a minute, we're not serving ourselves well with this, we're not serving patients, we're not serving our members. Um, but I think that West Streeting does deserve credit because I he do. has already had abuse for this. He's had all kinds of criticism. It's entirely baseless. You know, it's been four years of hard work to get this review out. It's very robust. So good for him that he's standing his ground. And uh, I, I think it's terrific that these other doctors have pushed back at their union. If I were a member of that union, I'd be appalled. Yeah. that people have acted in my name and, and called into question a piece of work that is important to protect children. Yeah. And it was deeply, deeply evidence-based. I mean, her research was immaculate. Uh, that report uh, was uh, intense. And uh, the BMA's objection to it, its protest over it, its opposition to it, is absolutely evidence-free. I mean, the BMA is not entirely staffed by doctors, but there's quite a few doctors, you know, in executive positions in the BMA. What are they thinking? What on earth are they thinking? They've got no evidence. Uh, Hillary Cass had a mass of evidence. What, you know, what, what on earth do they think they're playing at, objecting to an evidence-based report when they have no evidence? Well, and I think, as I say, the, the really irresponsible thing here is if you're the parent of an unhappy child and you really don't know how best to help that child, hearing the BMA question the CAST review is only going to make things harder for you. But Hilary Cass had a team. There was a team from the University of York. They looked at over 100 different studies. You know, they, as you say, it was a very robust piece of work. Um, and, and this can only be a political move by the BMA. And yeah. uh, it, it, if they really cared about these kids, they wouldn't be making these random statements about, about questioning a very thorough piece of work. Well, let's hope they get th that this uh, uh, robust reaction from these 1,400 doctors, as I say, including 70 professors, let's hope that that chastens the BMA and they see sense uh, and they stop all of this.